Hi everybody, in this video, we're going to learn about a brand new way of creating variables using the let keyword. These variables are special in that they're block scoped. They're not function scoped or scoped globally like you might have had with the var keyword. Now, if what I just said makes absolutely no sense, don't worry about it. By the time we get to the end of this video, it'll all be crystal clear. All right, so as you know, the JavaScript language has been going through a lot of changes, a lot of improvements over the past few years. And we've been bucketing these changes with a, fair, a series of terms. The most common one right now is known as ES6, or more formally known as ECMAScript 2015. Now the change we're gonna talk about, which is a let keyword, is something that was introduced as part of this set of changes to the JavaScript language. And essentially what this keyword does is it changes how your variables function. Now I have some stuff written here, but let's not focus on it right now. Let's look at some code, and then let's talk more about what the keyword does as we're looking at more examples going forward. So at the most simplistic view of what the let keyword does, it is very similar to the var keyword you might have used for all these years for creating variables. So here I have an example. I have a variable called blah, which I'm creating as a let keyword. It said let blah, and I'm setting it to equal to the word Monday. And then once I've created this variable, I can use it just like I would use any variable at any given point in time. So I have a function here called some function, very cleverly named, and I have an alert statement that simply prints the value of the blah variable. And if this code runs, you'll see, you'll see a dialog that says the word Monday on the screen. Pretty simple, right? And essentially, if we were to stop right here, you would go very far using that keyword and not notice any difference between it and the var keyword that you might have used. So let's talk about what makes let unique and why we would probably want to use it as opposed to the var keyword in certain situations. So the major difference with the let keyword has to do with what's known as scoping. And scoping is the term we use to talk about the visibility or the availability of a variable in your code. So let's take a look at this example. I have a function here called setState. And inside this function, I'm declaring a variable using a var keyword. I'm calling this variable state, and I'm setting it to the value of on, and I have an alert statement. Now, when this code runs, you're going to see the word on appear on your screen because the alert statement inside this function is going to become active. Now, at the very last line here, notice I have another alert statement. In this case, I'm also calling the state variable. In this case, the state variable is going to be undefined because clearly I do not have access to what's available in a set state function. Right? This makes sense. This is how it always works with scope. Now, let's go one level deeper. Let's talk about the variable, in this case, declared inside a block statement, like our if statement in this case. So here I have a function called check weight. And here I'm saying that inside this if statement, I'm going to declare a variable called text that says no free shipping for you. And just like before, I'm going to display the content of this text when in an alert statement when this line hits. And so when I run this code, you'll see no free shipping for you displayed for the first time. Great. Now, notice here, I have another alert statement, and this alert statement is outside of the block, the if block, where the text variable is actually defined. But when I run this code, guess what it'll display? It'll display no free shipping for you. And the reason for this is, is that the var keyword when you, when you create a variable using the var keyword, that variable is put into the scope or into the container of the function it is currently in. If there's no function currently there, it's gonna become a global variable on your window object. So it doesn't matter the var keyword is in this if statement, it is created under the check weight function itself. So, so a function here where I'm calling alert on the text variable, it'll still pretend and act as if the text variable was declared in its own context from the very beginning. So with var, you really don't have this concept of block scoping where any variables you create are localized to whatever block was contained in. And that is where the let statement really comes into play and really shines when you compare it to the var statement. So in this case, I have a, a function called the futures now. I have a variable called x equals 100, which is being declared globally. Now, inside this if statement, I have another if block, just like before. And instead of having a var statement to declare a variable, I'm having let x equals 350. I'm declaring a variable using the x keyword, and I'm setting it to 350. And just like before, I'm setting the alert statement for what 350 is going to look, what it's going to be by printing the value of x. Now, here's the difference. The let keyword actually supports block scoping. So when you create a variable, in this case, using the let keyword, it is not created under the, the futures now function, the most immediate function that encloses that particular statement. It is actually created inside the enclosing block itself, in this case, the if statement. 
So when I do let x equals 350 and do alert of x, the value of 350 is printed, which is exactly what I would want. But here's the kicker. When I do an alert of x outside of the block, notice what you see. You don't see 350, you see the value of 100, which is the value of x as it was declared globally a few moments earlier. So what you have with the let statement is true block scoping. With var, no block scoping. With let, you get block scoping. And that is the biggest difference between the var keyword and the let keyword when you're initializing variables. So there you have it, a very quick overview of what the let keyword brings to the table when you're declaring variables. Now, you might be wondering, given that let and var are very similar, and let just happens to have more precise functionality when inside a block statement when compared to the var keyword for declaring variables, why would you ever use the var keyword as opposed to just using let all the time? And that's a good point. I really don't think you would ever want to use var when with let you get everything that var provides in addition to the block scoping functionality, which is not necessarily a bad thing. In many languages, you have the concept of block scoping just by default. You don't have to do and use a new keyword like we're doing in JavaScript. So I'd say if you have no issues in your code by changing all your bars to let's, go for it and let's see what happens. You know, it's brand new. There's a lot of things that we don't know what doesn't work yet. So the only way we'll find out is by trying things out. And of course, because it's brand new, not all the browsers support it just yet. So make sure to check the browser compatibility tables on the internet to make sure that if you're using the let keyword, that the browsers you care about actually end up supporting it and your visitors aren't faced with a broken application, which is never a good idea. All right, if you wanna learn more, just go to curve.com. I have a bunch of articles on this and other topics that are hopefully of interesting to you. It's definitely of interest to me. And if you have any questions or just want to talk to someone about some random web developer topic, just go to the forum.croup.com. It's the forums, a lot of people there, human beings, real for the most part, who will be happy to answer your questions. And of course, if you want to reach me directly, you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Just ping me and usually, you know, take a few hours to notice your message and get back to you. But I try my best to be pretty prompt about that. And of course, if you found all of this pretty interesting, you can definitely read all of this content in the convenience of a physical book or in your Kindle device through the various books that I have written over the years. And you can find out more about the books I have written by clicking on the click here link or just going to crew.com and clicking on the various links that will take you there. All right, guys, with that, I will see you all next time.